everyone, I'm back with another bit of Peter Rabbit and today I've got this plant still growing out of my head and I've got these two cheeky flamingos, look at them, can you see they're wearing beach clothes, I think they think they're on holiday, actually the sun's gone in today, so anyway I'm going to get on with the story and I hope you enjoy it. Smoke, fire and clouds of dirt shoot from under the trees until there is a loud snapping sound. It's the fir tree that stands, that stands very near Bee's house, snapping at its base. The fir tree falls and falls and falls. It lands with a very loud crash right on top of Bee's glass conservatory, smashing into pieces. Whoa, says Mrs Tiggy Winkle as one of her spines flies off. My house! cries B as, Miss, as McGregor and the bunnies look on in horror. Peter can't believe what's just happened. He didn't mean to ruin beautiful B's beautiful cottage. He quickly shoves the, de the detonator into the pocket of his jacket. He detonated it. He pushed the button. It's McGregor pointing the finger, pointing the finger at Peter. He's a rabbit, says B. Angry at Thomas for blaming the rabbits, angry at the explosives for ruining the tree, and even more angry at the tree for ruining her home. But McGregor will not be stopped. He has to make B see that he is not the one to blame, that it was her precious rabbits all along. He can do a lot of things, B. A lot of things. They're devils. Stealing from the garden, electrocuting me, McGregor tries to explain, and traps. They booby trapped my house with traps on my head like a prisoner. They shot me off my house. You've lost your mind, says B, shaking her head. I'm so sorry, says McGregor. I can't believe I thought I liked you. You did? And I liked you. I like you. McGregor can see B pushing him away. She walks over to the rabbits, who all look very, very guilty. They never meant for B or her house to get hurt. Are you okay, sweeties? asked B, full of concern for her friends. It wasn't, it was an accident. I can fix this. McGregor will not give up. Some accident. I should have you arrested for what you did and for lying to me. The look of hurt on B's face is unbearable for McGregor to see. You don't really mean that, he says, scrambling for the words that will make everything better. I do. I mean what I say, which is more than I can say for you, says B. She looks at the rabbits. Come on, let's get away from this evil man. B and the rabbits walk off, but McGregor can't let B just walk away. He calls after her, wait, let me explain. But it's too late, she's gone. The next morning, a silence blankets. A silence blankets the countryside in the wake of the battle for McGregor's garden. J.W. Rooster III breaks the silence. No way. The sun came up again. Woohoo! More of this, although things aren't going so great now. Maybe last night should have been it. A for sale sign has been placed in front of the gate. Everything has changed. Inside the destroyed burrow, the rabbits are all awake. They are still recovering from the explosions. Mopsy and Flopsy are comforting each other, sifting through the clothes that Mopsy made. They are all ruined. Benjamin is trying to clean up one part of the burrow, the part where the part where their paw prints had been recorded through their entire bunny lives. Cottontail is playing with the ball they used to play with, but it's not the same. Peter is completely still. He is thinking about what happened. He looks at his sisters and his cousins. He looks at their ha home. It is lost. It is all lost. Peter looks across the at Bee's cottage, or what is left of it. Bee is rifling through her old paintings, trying to see if any of them have survived. She has never looked so sad. This wasn't part of the plan, huh? says Cottontail, her quiet voice as she looks to her brother for answers. Peter looks at his sister and shakes his head sadly. Peter has never felt more alone. Oh my goodness, what a sad bit of the story. Oh, I wonder what will happen next. Hopefully it will get a bit better, but that was a very sad little bit. Okay, well, it's a pleasure to read the story to you today and I hopefully look forward to seeing you soon. Okay then, bye!